Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the final chapter of the Salvadores textbook structure in architecture. So this is uh, the video about chapter 15 and the, this is the final chapter. Thank you so much for uh, spending so much time with me here with all these um, chapters and that was a great uh, brief overview of the chapters. So chapter 15 is the conclusion and that's about understanding of structural principles. So uh, we saw in all those chapters that we discussed uh, previously that um, those were the attempts uh, to identify a qualitative presentation of structural principles on the basis of general experience with forces, materials, and deformations. So, um, and this uh, sub section is about intuition and knowledge, which is very important because we um, face structures every single day in our life. So, um, uh, the uh, uh, purely intuitive approach used to introduce these principles cannot be expected to lead to quantitative knowledge in a field as complex as structures. So, of course, we will need the mathematical presentation uh, and also some um, other calculations uh, to understand um, that branch of physics. So, um, but it's important to understand that intuition is an essentially synthetic process that brings about the sudden direct understanding of ideas more or less consciously considered over a period of time. It becomes a satisfactory road to knowledge on two conditions. It should be based on a large amount of prior experience and it should be carefully verified. So um, pure, uh, that means unchecked intuition is misleading most of the time. So let's um, talk a little bit more about that. So um, although it can be misleading if that is unchecked, it may be greatly refined by experience. So one of the best tools for refining structural intuition is the use of models demonstrating the diversified actions considered uh, here in this book and many other uh, books, studies, and uh, research uh, topics. So since all architectural actions involve displacements and displacements are the visual result of these actions, models are ideally suited for the intuitive presentation of structural concepts. This is why um, uh, in the architectural schools, students build elementary models that demonstrate the structural behavior of simple elements more convincingly than any drawing ever will. So um, uh, on the other hand, it cannot be overemphasized that intuition without experience is a dangerous tool since it leads to unchecked assumptions. So um, also, at first, um, it's hard to believe that the straight sides of a stiffener supported cylindrical barrel move inward under load because the curved section of the cylinder suggests arch action and arches are known to push outwards, but yet such is the case. So that can be checked empirically um, and that's why the models are so uh, important. So when we talk about qualitative and quantitative knowledge, um, so qualitative knowledge should often be a prerequisite to quantitative analysis since interest in a field is seldom, seldom aroused without some prior understanding. It is hoped that the reader um, interested in structure or any student interested in structures may obtain from the preceding chapters that minimum understanding of structural behavior required to arouse uh, the interest and be led um, by it to a serious study of the subject. So please take 
uh, this series of videos as the introduction or prerequisite to more advanced structural studies. So structures are best presented in the language proper to the quantitative analysis of measurable phenomena, mathematics, um, not the complex mathematics required for an understanding of the more advanced aspects of science, but the simple mathematics of algebra, trigonometry, and um, calculus are required. So um, the availability of structural knowledge made possible by the use of mathematics has produced impressive results. Structures which in the past could have been conceived and built only by architectural geniuses are designed at present by modest engineers in the routine of their office work. So this democratization of structural knowledge while putting advanced structures within the reach of the average architect introduces the danger of architectural misuse by the practitioner who lacks a solid structural foundation. So um, there is little doubt in the minds of both engineers and architects that modern structural concepts are used uh, properly only when the architect has a thorough understanding of structures. So, um, this does not uh, imply that all architects should become mathematicians. It simply suggests for those practitioners who wish to express themselves through structural forms should first learn to use the tools of quantitative analysis and also use a multidisciplinary collaboration and have multiple teams in peer review before the project is released. And we are approaching the last subsection of the chapter 15, that's the future of architectural structures. And we know that the 21st century has ushered in the digital age in all segments of society. So um, we're entering a new age of architectural structures as well. Complex structural analysis and design at one time only um, there was one time only a dream that is now enabling designers to generate and verify structures through impossible, um, as recently as the latter 20th century, less than the span of time since the last publication of this text. So uh, when you watch this video and when you read this textbook, probably it's already outdated. Uh, and with the development of the AI, or artificial intelligence, there are more and more possibilities every day. So um, there are robots that um, uh, are used in the construction field. There are other things in um, computer controlled manufacturing, 3D printers and so on. So uh, we are not going to develop this here just because uh, the technologies develop every day, and um, that is um, definitely going to be outdated when we are uh, watching this video. So what I would like to uh, finish this video with is um, complex and challenging uh, structures, and that's uh, how the future actually uh, is showing itself. Um, no matter how complex and challenging the, the structures may be. And however sophisticated, um, we'll, we'll have the uh, sophisticated computational tools uh, at the core of all structural understanding are the elements, elemental principles that are fundamentally invariant. So uh, we need to understand that all structures obey the basic principles of linear and rotational static equilibrium. A true and deep understanding of these elemental structural principles comes only with time and continued practice and combines intuitive knowledge plus at least elemental mathematical application. So please remember that such foundational understanding is the root of the development of any stru uh, structure, any architectural project in which the structure is integrally a part of the design as opposed to an afterthought.
So um, also uh, the um, structure engineer and the architect must uh, work together uh, toward the mutual understanding and fruitful collaboration. And also the uh, technician and the designer must work together to the greater architectural projects because that serves um, general public and that protects general health, safety and welfare. So that was it. That wraps up our chapter 15. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in other videos. Bye. Thank you.